Hello everybody, this is Andy, and welcome to episode 7 of All the Mod 6. One thing has changed since the last episode, and that is the ore processing right here. I'm now just using two enriching factories for smelters in order to double all of our ores, and we've worked through our backlog pretty well. I used to have 40,000 pieces of uh, iron chunk, now I have 12,000, and this thing's only been running for like maybe an hour. So, uh, we're doing well. Also, this thing is still incredibly loud, uh, and doing its thing, uh, we're producing 70, what, almost 80,000 RF per tick, and, uh, we're running at full uptime, and we're producing way more fuel than we need. I would really like to muffle that. Do I have a muffler in this pack, please? Uh, not a very good one. I don't think I can put this, can I put this in here? Uh, no. It's just loud forever, I guess. First things first, since we're producing a lot of power, or at least we have the ability to produce a lot of power, let's store that power. And the way I want to do that is in the ultimate induction cells. So, looks like I'm going to have a couple more recipes in here than I kind of wanted to, but uh, it'll be alright. I will do these and I'll be right back. Alright, all those recipes are in there, and they're actually much, much, much more nested than I thought they were. And uh, we do actually need to start producing one thing I didn't think we... Please, please be loud, please be less loud. I'm gonna try and turn this off in the inventory muffler. Okay, I found it. Uh, it's the fission reactor mechanism generators tile machine thing. Whatever, it's quiet now and I'm happy. And do I want, how do I want to do this? I'll probably, I kind of want to split it, but I'm not sure. For now, we don't need lithium because we're not making the fusion reactor. And I'm not sure if we ever will actually make the fusion reactor. I want to accept liquids or gases, I guess. Input top. What? Of course, I've forgotten. It is liquid coming out of here, so it needs to be rotary condensated because apparently only the gas can be solidified into lithium. I don't know. I don't make the rules. I just play the game. Where is my storage bus and dense cable, please? Thank you. I'm going to hook this up, and we should be able to at least consider ordering the, uh, what's it called? The induction stuff? Now this thing produces lithium just fine, somewhat slowly, so I can only order... Yeah, I'm gonna have to take a minute before I'm able to order the actual induction cells and providers, but one of these holds 204 billion... or no, wait, sorry. One of these holds 1.6 trillion RF inside of it, so, like, one will be enough for the foreseeable future. The next thing, though, I want to see if I'm able to bump this up just a little bit. Do we need to scram it? I'm going to scram it and let it cool down, and then we can bump up the burn rate to, I don't know, 5 millibuckets per tick? I know we can produce that much um, right here with this thing, because we're producing 32 millibuckets per tick, and we've gone through our entire backlog, so we have... What is that? 2,000 buckets of fissile fuel? I think we're producing more than five still, so we should be decently good to go. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and activate it and hope the temperature is okay. 441 Kelvin, but I think that's all right. It's higher than it was, but it should be producing a ton of steam. We're having no issue transferring it, and this these things are turning faster, which means I assume we're producing about four times or five times the amount of RF, which we pretty much exactly are. 400,000 RF per tick. This is nowhere near maxing out this thing. We would need 50 millibucks per tick on the injection rate on that guy to fully max it out, but I mean, that would be what? We we're producing 400,000 here, so times 10. That would be 4 million RF per tick from this thing. And technically, that wouldn't be maxing out this industrial turbine right here. Technically, that would be maxing out the this singular ultimate pressurized tube, because this thing can transfer about a, a thousand buckets per tick. And uh, this thing can't even produce a thousand buckets per tick because it's too small, but uh, this thing can consume about four times that. So 
theoretically this thing can produce lots and lots of power. Theoretically it can produce 20 million RF per tick, which we will never need. So here's the induction like box matrix thing, whatever. Uh, there are no statistics because there's no cells and no providers. Those are being crafted at the moment. They're going to take a minute because they have a lot of things to go into them. It looks like this cell might finish up, but we do need one of each before we're able to use the induction matrix. This is literally just induction casing with two provider, wait, uh, induction ports. One is set on input. The other is going to be set on output. And then I should probably grab a couple of universal cables and hook this up to the network. Now we can pull energy out if we want to well once we can put energy in and pull energy out oh we're going to create an infinite loop here let's change that we're going to shove energy into this thing first from this and then we'll pull it out and this reactor served us well in setting up the big fission reactor and stir and turbine but uh i think it needs to turn off Unless we need some cyanite for anything, or plutonium, or whatever this can be processed into, I don't think we're going to need it for now. So I'm going to leave it up just in case we do need cyanite, and we can make changes to it should we need it later. But, uh, I don't know. It looks pretty cool. And this is like our multi-block area, so, you know, I'll take it. And, uh, I think we might be reaching some things finishing crafting. Nope, not even close. We still have 520 infused alloys. Things we're going to need to get into a little bit later in this episode are better production of sulfur and fluoride. Sulfur, I think we can just have it come from, or wait, uh, we can crush this sulfur dust. Sulfur dust can be made from crushing, no, wait, 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 wait. I thought there was a recipe for easier sulfur. Yes, uh, if we put our hydrogen chloride that we had before to use in a chemical injection chamber, we can produce gunpowder from flint, and we can produce flint from uh, just having gravel on hand, and then we can automate sulfur production probably much faster than we uh, are currently using it. For fluorite, I think we're just going to have to get the bee for it. We're going to get into bees later this episode because we do need to start producing resources this way because we're going to need a lot of resources moving forward. And as you can see, we're using sulfur fairly quickly, but I'm also producing incredibly quickly here. We're actually backing up. In the meantime, let's get into a mod that I've actually never played with before, Environmental Tech. Uh, this is how we're going to produce a bunch of our resources in ores. Uh, bees are going to be used for the weird stuff. This is going to be all of the ores. And maybe we'll get sulfur from this. We can just process it. That'd be pretty cool too. Um, so let me put in the recipes and we can hopefully try and get a couple of these lithrite void miners up and running. Maybe a couple of solar cells too. But I, I feel like I remember the first couple of tiers of solar cells are pretty crappy. All right. Here is the placement for seriously seriously dude you know what we're doing we're doing weather clear thank you you just it just messes up the bitrate too much i i really don't like it anyways here are the three void miners that we're gonna set up i'm setting them up upside down so they'll be nice and pretty and uh, we don't have to worry about uh like spacing underneath or anything like that so what i do need to get is how am i out of did i my Wait, what? How did this shut down? Whoa, hold on. You're burning. You're full. Oh, shoot. Okay, okay. Um, It's a really good thing that this thing can hold so much steam uh, because I forgot to turn it back on the dumping excess. Uh, dumping excess means it'll dump the excess steam if it ever fills up. It filled up on energy, and it can't produce energy if, like, it, there's too much steam. So, uh, that was an issue. Where the heck is... Oh, we're not putting energy into the system from this anymore. Okay, good thing we can fix that really quickly. And I'm glad I have cables on me. Uh, just need to wait a second for things to turn back on. And now I should be able to order... Or uh, not order, but grab the induction 
cells and providers is stuff like actually working again thank you um okay now we can set this up and our system won't run out of energy just because i'm an idiot um and we'll go back to the void miners in just a second but one induction cell one induction provider the cell provides the amount of energy that can be stored in this thing and the provider tells how much energy can be input and extracted at uh, any given tick so we close this thing up and things should start filling up as you can see there's already two billion rf in there uh and now we can disconnect this uh i turned it off which is not the mode you want your pickaxe to be in so we're inputting uh what 3.27 million that's just because this thing is uh, uh filling up or not filling um outputting energy and this thing is inputting energy and it looks like we're using somewhere around 40,000 rf per tick we're gonna put the other 360,000 rf per tick to use soon so there used to be an assembler like wrench thing that you would use to build the multi-blocks for these but apparently you can just tell it to build now and it'll be fine um i do need to add two modifiers which i have as uh i ordered them didn't i null modifiers give me six please thank you and here are the three void ore miners assembled i think this middle one is going to disappear to the end eventually because we're going to need to get mica from it but for now We'll just have them all here. And I think the way that we actually need to do this is we need to flash program one of these memories to whatever type of thing we want it to be. Oh, I don't know. Which one do I want? Metallic ore? What does this give me? Uh, I guess we're about to find out. I'm going to set one of them to metallic ore. I think, and then this should begin producing every 1,400 ticks. Jeez, that is very slow. And it looks like it's not getting enough RF, so I'm going to have to make a couple more flux plugs. I was slightly mistaken. They don't auto-push from the actual void miner thing anymore. They auto-push from the item output, which, you know, makes sense. And also, these things require two FE energy inputs, I believe, at the first tier. And after the first tier, you only really need one because it's able to suck in enough energy to uh, power itself full time. I think these use slightly over a thousand RF per tick, which is perfectly fine. Um, I do want to see what other things we can get from this. I think I want multi miners. What is this? What's a multi miner? I'm so intrigued. Um, okay, one thing that I do actually want is I do want a mineral i want a mineral so what it looks like is the metallic ore miner and much as you might think is going to get us all of the metals lead copper osmium whichever metals we can get gold apparently it just got uh, i think it'll also get us these chunks for some reason don't know why technically they probably count as ores or something like that whatever they can still be processed exactly the same way as ores so it's perfectly fine this thing is going to get us stuff like coal niter it's where we'll get the sulfur i speak of the devil there's some sulfur um, and other things. This is really quite, quite nice, actually. I, I actually did figure out if we go into here and we just want a straight up ore miner that will mine for all ores. We just tell it we want this ore miner or uh, we want this crystal miner, this resource miner. It'll pick up a little bit of everything. But for now, we're going to split since we uh, have three of them set up and only need an ore miner and a gem miner. What we should see is that this thing should begin getting some gems. We don't need lithorite. We actually need the next tier, which I believe is rhodium. In order to improve the chances of what we get from these, we can focus on specific materials using lenses. Um, I'm going to leave these completely blank because I kind of want them to get an array of all kinds of resources from the uh, both the ore miners. But this one, I do want to get a couple pieces of erodium, four pieces of erodium to be exact, and then I'll be able to focus a laser lens on erodium to increase the chances that we get erodium by uh, like an astronomical amount. It's by like 10 times or something crazy like that. Also, someone count the amount of times I just said erodium in this last clip because I think it's an incredible amount. Oh man, we completely filled up that ME drive. Uh, are these empty? Oh, those are still empty too. Okay, we're good. That's probably ingots, right? Because we are finishing 
processing up all of our chunks, right? Yeah, we're getting towards the end there. And we come to a sort of an impasse in environmental tech. I kind of just have to let this thing run for a little while before I'm able to progress any further. I believe it's somewhere around 24 hours that these things need to run in order to produce enough erodium to upgrade themselves to tier 2. So, yeah. Once you get to tier 2, it starts to get faster. Tier 3, even faster. Tier 4, super fast. Until it's basically easier to upgrade. It takes like 15 minutes to upgrade. All the way up to like tier 8. So, you know. Eventually, we'll be doing really well here, but I have a little bit of time before I need to release this episode, and I could go record Celestial Journey right now, so I think I'm just going to leave this game open and uh, let resources pick up and uh, hopefully get a couple more pieces of erodium soon so I can focus that lens. Oh, and before I do go, I do want to say I calculated approximately how long this thing would last, assuming it produces no more of the fissile fuel from the sulfur, because we are running a little bit low on sulfur, if I'm being completely honest. We're already down to 100 pieces, and we produce it about one of every 10 pieces of gravel we sieve, so we're not producing it very quickly. However, assuming the rate that we, or the amount of sulfur that we have right now, Running at 1 millibucket per tick of fissile fuel, we should be able to run the turbine right here at 80,000 RF per tick for somewhere around 52 hours, 52 to 53 hours. So I can just leave my game open and it'll be perfectly fine uh, because hopefully in 52 hours we will have an infinite source of sulfur and fluoride. Okay guys, it is now the next morning, and hopefully my voice doesn't sound too bad, but I did just wake up just a little bit ago, and it turns out we have enough stuff to upgrade one Void Miner. And there we go. Nice and fancy. It actually built its entire thing. Usually it doesn't build its entire thing. Looks like it gave it four FE inputs, but um, it did its best. I'm going to change out a couple of these for the right ones. And apparently the tick cost is 2,000, so every, what is that, 100 seconds or so we get something from this? Wait, is that right? 2,000, is it 10 seconds? No? That's 100 seconds. That's expensive. Um, let's make some modifiers then. Since we have four slots for modifiers, we can make two for frequency and two for mass or volume or... Whatever makes us get more stuff. And I can do that because I have some Lons Delight. And I think they just use, yeah, they just use one per modifier. So I want frequency, and I want, not bandwidth, I want amplification, I think. Right? And I want the right amplification. I need a tier two amplification. And it looks like I'm quite literally just not allowed to make bandwidth modifiers because you need a tier five to make the initial tier of a uh, bandwidth modifier so screw that we're just gonna make a couple more of these so we have four ampli amplification modifiers they're gonna be tier one i hope they work on the tier two machine because i can't make the tier two modifiers without mica so we're gonna set up a void ore miner in the end to get to the end we're actually going to need an end cake which requires a normal cake which i don't have the stuff for. I almost have the stuff for. That's not actually bad. Uh, I do need an egg. I have no way of getting around egg, which means I'm going to need a chicken. How the heck am I going to get a chicken? Okay, it's been a minute since I last recorded this series, uh, probably four or five days, because I haven't really been able to upload that much recently because of school and running and all this kind of stuff. But I think we're getting into the swing of things just a little bit better now, and uh, I did do a couple of upgrades. Uh, this is Chironite now, which I think is two tiers higher than it was last time I recorded, and this is Erodium, which is one tier higher. This is the Ore Miner, this is the Crystal Miner. Let's go ahead and upgrade this one more time to the Palladium. Turns out I didn't have quite enough palladium to upgrade it, so I had to set up the new thing again and let it run for a little while. But um, now we have everything we need in order to build the multi-block, and it's probably not going to get everything perfectly correct. Oh, I should probably have removed that. Um, so I'll fix this up, and then we'll see quite how fast this thing runs. Eh, it's not that quick. It's actually, I don't think it's 
any faster right now because I haven't put in uh, better frequency modifiers. These are still the tier one frequency modifiers that I've just been kind of working with. Um, but we did, or not we did, I did, in between the sessions, I found a chicken. Uh, one of them spawned over there. So I just need this guy to lay an egg and then we can go to the end. I gave him his own little prison. So whenever he lays his egg, we can uh, just take it. Except he's not laying his egg, and it's kind of obnoxious because i it's the only thing stopping me from going to the end. I can make everything else for the end cake. Um, I had a cow that I found also. I milked him a couple of times. We just need an egg. Well, in the meantime, while we're waiting, I think I'm just going to clean the place up a little bit. I do not need this reactor anymore. I don't think it's going to stay. It, I don't know. It adds to the base. It adds some stuff to the base, but I kind of want to clean up a little bit because it's starting to look just a little bit cramped in here. And I think this is a big part of it because we have all of these multi blocks over here. And um, this is just, I think, one too many for the space. So, you know, bye bye. And there we go. I think that actually makes this area look a lot cleaner. Um, I think we still need the pump jack just in case for later on. I'm certain we have enough plastic to finish out the pack, but uh, just in case, you know, we'll leave it up instead of, you know, tearing it down and then having to put it back up again later. Uh, one other thing that I wanted to do was make our Emmy controller just a little bit more prominent. Um, I think we're going to turn it into a, what, a 5x5? Five five? That would be up here, I think. Yeah, that'll be cool. And now we uh, have finished our beautification for the time because I have an egg. So let's go to the end, set up a resource miner in there, and we should be good to go in finishing up environmental tech. And do I have all this stuff yet? Oh, it looks like I already crafted it. Perfect. I think we do need these eyes of enders to recharge the end cake. But other than that, we should be good to go. So what's something that's never going to get destroyed? Where can I put my end cake? Probably... Um, I don't know. I th I'm going to beautify this place a little bit more eventually. We can go there. Oh, look, and it's full already. So we should just be able to go. Um, Let me get a bow. We're going to have to kill the Ender Dragon. I went ahead and just made the electric bow for mechanism. I don't know if it's any good, if it does more damage than a standard bow, but I guess it can do fire mode, uh, which makes the arrows be on fire. But I don't think that's very useful for the ender dragon i don't think the ender dragon can be on fire whatever let's go and see what he's got for us is it always this shadowy in the end dimension i don't think so right ow that did a lot of damage um let me destroy these real quick and the ender dragon outplayed me um <laughs> Okay, so what happened was, I was one of the caged things, um, I had to break through it obviously to get to the, um, I should probably take some of these just in case, I had to break through it obviously to get to the thing that you have to blow up, and um, the ender dragon shot at me, blew up the crystal as I was standing next to it before I could move away, damaged me with his shot and the crystal thing, and uh, kind of ruined my entire life, but uh... Give me my stuff back, please. And we're good to go. And going into the last shot. There it is. So loud. Every time, it's it's so loud. Bye-bye. And there it is. The end of Minecraft. Thanks for watching, guys. That's the end of the series. Just kidding, of course. Um, so there's some cool stuff that we can get here, like dimensional shards. That was a huge vein of dimensional shard ore. Jeez. Um, what's this stuff? It looks like... Okay, no, it's not Batania. It looks like we do have some end ores. Whatever this is. Silent Gear. Never messed with the mod. Don't plan on messing with it in this playthrough. Um, and a lot of obsidian, if we ever want it. Ooh, I do think I wanted these dragon scales. They're used in crafting a lot of eggs for the bees. A lot of the initial eggs for the bees, actually. So we could start to get into bees if we want to. Let's also go ahead and collect our bounty. Thank you. I think we do probably need this for something, right? Ooh, we're gonna need a bunch of them. We're gonna we're gonna have to make a dragon egg bee or a dragon bee or something, but uh that's a problem for a later day.
Okay, we also need to build the void miner here. The void, I believe, resource miner is what we want. Um, I forgot to bring a lot of things for this, but we can assemble the structure perfectly fine, and it should have absolutely no issues unless something got placed in the wrong place. Um, what happened? Oh, it didn't place these frames because it's, it's uh, stupid. It is a incomplete mod at the moment, and you're going to turn on, right? Right? And there we go. Fully assembled. There was a block of endstone here that I placed this on that uh, did not get replaced, apparently, because this mod does not replace blocks in its way. That probably makes perfect sense. Um, how's it going, bud? Please don't look at me. Uh, okay, let me go grab the other stuff we need to set this up fully. So, I uh, flashed this with a resource miner, and it should cost 6,000 RF per tick? 297. I put eight frequency modifiers on this thing. I mean, I'll take it. That's fine with me. Um, I do kind of want to put a normal chest on here for a while, but I guess I just simply can't. I guess I could sit here and wait. It's getting some stuff that is not useful, I don't think, but eventually it should get mica. And yep, there we go. Our first piece of mica. Once we get a bunch of this, we can start upgrading our resource and ore and laser wait uh crystal miners and all that kind of stuff more but for now i think we should probably move on from this stuff maybe get into some magic i kind of want to mess around with something other than tech for a little while maybe batania yeah let's go ahead and get into batania and astral sorcery just a little bit because i want to get some mana production going because we're going to need a lot of mana to create a lot of the apiaries because i believe we need a billion pieces of grass and the way i want to get grass is to just throw grass into a into a mana pool with the conjuration catalyst below it uh it also means we have to get fairly deep into batania but like that's not that difficult i don't think we're going to get there today but we can do our best so we're also going to need this infusion altar for various things along the way. The thing that I want it for right now actually is to just make a dirt seed because I want more dirt because I want to make a couple rows here just out of grass. I think that'd look kind of nice. As far as I can tell, there's no better way to make dirt at this point in time that I actually want to do. So there's our dirt seed. We should just be able to... Can I just hoe the ground with this thing? No, nah, it's not like the shick axe in Celestial Journey. We'll just have to make an actual hoe. Or I might actually just have a hoe? Nah, diamond hoe it is. We're pretty rich. And uh, what was that fertilizer called? Fertilizer. It's this mystical fertilizer stuff. We'll just make a couple stacks of this, and I'm going to grow a bunch of dirt. Apparently, this fertilizer just doesn't work anymore. There should be enough light for this thing to grow. We should have no issues. Um, instead, then, I think what I'm going to do is try and make the best watering can possible. It's going to require a couple of recipes, but they have to go in anyways, so let's put them in now. To do this recipe, we're going to have to craft the different tiers of essence for the ingots. Um, so we're going to need Supremium and Imperium. The names have changed. It's messing me up. Tertium and... Uh, nope, and Prudentium. Those are the four essences that need to be crafted in here, and I guess we could also craft the last tier, Insanium, in here. Um, we're going to use a crafter from RF Tools, because this thing can use this Master Infusion Crystal a lot better than the Applied Energistic System can in its auto-crafting mechanics. So what we can do is we can just push the different uh, essences, essences in here and let it output directly into the ME system. And there we go, all the recipes in here are set up. You do have to go ahead and change out whatever infusion crystal it imports to the master infusion crystal, because I believe it automatically imports like the normal infusion crystal, and we want to use this one specifically. Um, the mode you want this to be in is send the result into here, but leave like ancillary input, which is something that's already in here, in the input buffer. So this crystal will stay here, it won't get sent to the output. And you can change that right here. As you can see, I changed it from external to external C, which means remaining items, like buckets, will stay up here. This is a remaining item, so it stays up here. Now I just need to, 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 I need to tell the Applied Energistic System that it can shove four of each of these essences in here and get an output from it. And then I just need to extract from here into the Ender Chest, I think. And now I should just be able to request any of these essences. Proof of concept, let's request 
for Insanium, and that's going to take 3,000 Inferium, but it'll suck it from there, shove all these things in here. Let's turn this on to fast mode so it just goes a little bit faster. And as you can see, it's just doing the crafting, and it's very quick, and we're starting to get Insanium. This was this is actually much faster than I thought it would be. Um, I think it used to wait in 1.12. It doesn't wait anymore. We just have things instantly now. So let's go ahead and order one of these Supremium water cans. I don't think it's going to take all that long to craft. There are a lot of inputs, but they're all very, very simple components. And there it goes. Uh, perfect. Now I think I need to fill this thing up somehow. Can I just fill that up like right here? You want to go in there? How do I... Do I have to fill it up from actual, like, water? Oh, it's filled. And now we should be able to come over here and just use it? Right? Is that doing things? Um, do I have to shift? I don't know if it's doing anything. I feel like I'm not doing anything. Okay, I turned my particles on, and it, it, it does do things. It's just way worse than I thought it was. So... Um, well, that was a useless slide project. We will need creative essence and stuff anyways, so that's not a total waste. We'll need a lot of insanium down the line. Um, so it's just setting up that now is perfectly fine, but this thing is useless. Instead of using the Supremium watering can and getting it manually then, why don't we go ahead and set up a phytogenic insulator? So we want to auto input, auto output both right here. Um, it does need water and it needs these upgrades, and we give it the seed. And it doesn't go because we still didn't give it water. Can I make a sink? Oh, I just have one. A uh, fluid pipe, please. And we should just be able to do this, do that, and tell you you can input water from the front face, which you can do. This is a mess. And there we go. Now it starts working incredibly slowly. It has all four augments. I thought it'd be faster than this. Okay. Okay, I gave it a little bit of bone meal. It, it, we're auto-exporting bone meal here because we have 53,000 pieces of bone meal and I just storage bust it. Over time, eventually we'll produce enough dirt that we won't really have to worry about it, but that time does not appear to be now. Before we can go any further into Batania, we do want to at least semi-automate the pure daisies because they take so long to do their jobs. And how we're gonna do that is we're gonna add eight formation planes right here. I'm going to need stone. Do I have any stone smelted up right now? Uh, I can make one and I'm gonna need oak wood because these are the two things that turn into the living wood and living rock. I'm gonna set four of these formation filters as only stone and four as oak wood. And then on top, we're gonna to have annihilation planes. So this is going to be a subnet. It's gonna be completely off the grid from our main net because we're not gonna need a huge amount of living wood or living rock in this pack. Um, but I don't wanna to have to place the blocks myself from now on. Uh, we're gonna use an Emmy controller here to break up the channels so we can have up to 32 channels per side. But in this case, it's gonna be probably about eight. So I need the annihilation planes right here. And then we can move, oh, that's the wrong place. And then we can move on to the next step. Actually, scratch that. We want them to be on two completely different subnets because the way formation planes you can't set, or annihilation planes, you can't set filters for them. So we need to store living wood and living rock on this subnet and store oak and stone on this subnet, which is you know, perfectly fine. I just need a couple of drawers. Uh, we can just use... That'll be fine, right? I've gone ahead and added a storage bus to the bottom of this drawer, and if we place oak wood and stone into this drawer, we should see that it gets almost immediately placed by the system. No. Why not? Blocks will be placed as block. Priority 100, maybe? Wait, uh, let's not do that. Uh, let's take, take these back and set this priority to negative one maybe and if i do that why do i have extra blocks now what if i do that will it get placed hmm 
slight change. I think we need to import items into this network, so we should be using an import bus, and then they get placed. We can use acceleration curves so they get placed faster, and as we should see, these things will eventually switch over to their uh, living variant. Now we want to store them in the other network. Actually, since this isn't acting in the same way that I thought it would, we don't really need another network. We can just, since we're importing from this, this isn't seen by the formation planes as a storage area. We should just be able to say storage bus here, grab one living rock and living wood. I think I have a couple in here. Oh yeah, 35, 34. Throw these into here, lock it up, a storage bus, priority one. And then connect it. Oh, uh, connect it. Uh, I guess we use a cable anchor here so it doesn't connect that like that. And then connect it up like that. And that should break them, right? Once this thing turns on. Uh, oh, yeah, I need to put the flux point back because we're out of energy. And you turn on and you break. Right? Oh, they, these guys aren't online yet. Oh, because they're not connected to the network. Um, how do I connect to the network? I guess we pull up from this side. Nope, that's going to break that. Cable anchor. Bam, bam, bam. And we're good to go. Perfect. And it's so fast. I just went ahead and threw like 10-ish stacks of each in here. So that should effectively be enough living wood and living rock for the rest of the pack. And now what we can do is set up our mana generation once again. Uh, I'm just going to use endo flames until we can get to, um, what's it called? The Kekamurus. The Kekamurus is a cake eating flower. The good thing about this pack is it has astral sorcery. So um, if we get a good uh crystal lens we can turn pumpkins into cakes and since we're going to be using endo flames for the time being and they produce mana incredibly slowly that's so satisfying i love that so much um we do want to be dropping coal on them automatically and we're going to use a hopper or not a hopper hawk a solgania which is a magnet disabling flower to make sure we don't um pick up the coal when we're working around this area I also need a seed, nice and easy, toss it in there, and what we can do is, if you see, we get over here, we pick up the coal. Uh, do I have my magnet on? Yeah. Uh, if you put the Sogania there, it will not allow you to pick up the coal. So, yeah, this disables magnets in a certain radius. It's like, actually, we can see. Um, no, we can't see. But we can see that we're starting to get a little bit of mana which means we can start to do a little bit of crafting. First thing we want to do to automate this coal usage is to make a little bit of mana glass, some mana steel, to make a hovering hourglass. And then to drop the coal, we're going to have a precise dropper from Cyclic, and you can drop downwards, right? If you can't drop downwards, I'm going to lose my mind. Please. Well... I guess I'll live. Uh, you can set the offset in this thing so it'll still drop directly in the center, which is perfectly fine with me. This is actually a truly precise dropper. I'm pretty happy with it. So, since the endo flames burn for half of the fuel's burn time, we need to drop 8 pieces of coal every 800 ticks, or 1 piece of coal every 100 ticks, which I have this set to 106 because it's actually kind of impossible to configure correctly and accurately. Um, oh look, I did it. Um, so now we're perfect. We should use coal at the exact rate we drop it, I think, unless I'm incorrect. But it seems to be working just about perfectly, and the only thing left to do is to get the coal over here somehow. The way I'm going to get coal over there is using the ender chest, like I said. Um, we're going to use an export bus into a black, black, black ender chest, which will hold only coal. And then what we can do is just bring this ender chest over here drop that that block does not need to be there anymore drop this i don't know right here and then we can just use the pipes in order to transfer our items from place to place and there we go that should be slow but fully automatic mana production for the time being in order to store a bit more mana we're going to use a mana splitter right here that is going to get the mana pumped into it and then three mana pools and that will evenly divide the mana up between the mana pools so we'll have three whole mana pools that can be used for things it also means we can have a co oh, nope a 
conjuration catalyst underneath one of them. We did have a... We did have one of these, right? Ah, no, the first tier one is the alchemy catalyst, so we can have an alchemy catalyst, say, under this block right here. And I do need a piece of dirt because my magnet is disabled in this area. Perfectly fine. And then we can put a conjuration catalyst under this one when we get one. Now that we've got a little bit of Batania stuff crafting up in the background, let's get into Astral a little bit. Uh, we need a luminous crafting tibble, tibble, table and then a resonating wand in order to start crafts. We should have this. If not, I believe we have some aqua marine shale of some kind. No, we don't. Interesting. Um, how do we get aqua marine? I believe it is from... A, we get it from the laser drill. We can get this from a sieve, a waterlogged heavy sieve with compressed sand. That'll be easy. And here we go. We're getting all kinds of things, including a bunch of aquamarine. I actually have enough. Um, am I gonna... Hmm. I might sieve a little bit more. I really don't want to right now. I might set up a permanent waterlogged sieve over there then. Uh, just give me one moment. This sieve will just live here, and uh, whenever I want to use it to get something like Aquamarine, I just can. For right now, though, I'm not doing any more of this. I got the 8 Aquamarine that I need, and I can make a Resonating Wand. So now, we can truly, well and truly, get into Astral Sorcery. First things first, we're going to need some Light Wells. That's going to require us to have a couple of Rock Crystals. And that is a lot more Rock Crystals than I thought we were going to get from that. Um, I do need some Marble... Ruined marble, chiseled marble, and more ruined marble. So chiseled marble is made like that. Let's make a stack. Ruined marble is made like that. Let's also make a decent bit. And that should be everything we need. Nighttime is almost over. So let's go ahead and craft up two of these if I can. I threw my aquamarine back in the system. Give me these back. Um, I'm going to try and get two, I think. Hopefully we don't run out of starlight. And you just... You just whack the thing with your wand, and it goes. And it's very pretty. Um, and hopefully, we have enough light left for one more. Looks like it. During the day, uh, since we can't do any actual Astro Sorcery right now during the day, unless I want to get into Blood Magic and be able to change tonight whenever I want to, not going to do that for the time being. We don't need that much Astral stuff at the moment, and we don't really have to stress about it. So I'm going to go up to maybe like... 200 ish so we can get a little bit better starlight stuff and uh then we'll set up a little platform and uh that's where we'll do all of our astral all right we're up here at 200 and i don't know 201 200 and some change um and this is where we're gonna do all of our astral i set up a little 17 by 17 structure chunk aligned just the way it was meant to be and uh because it's only about midday let's set up some light wells so we can get a little bit of stuff going. I'm going to need a tank. Oh, I can just, yeah, I, I also expanded the range at which my wireless works, so I can just order uh, whatever I want up here. I do need my wrench, turn these into this, just like that, and then we're going to want to use a chest to pipe things into it. Slight change of plans. Um, these can only be interacted with from the bottom face. Uh, and we don't have conduits, so we can't do fluid and item in the same space. So, what we're going to have to do... I was going to use rock crystals, because we have a lot of rock crystal ore, and not a whole lot of um, aquamarine, which is what I usually use for this process. So I guess I'll just manually throw this stuff in here every once in a while, tell these guys to extract again, because I did get rid of them, and we start producing a little bit of liquid starlight. It doesn't take much to upgrade the structure again, and as you as you heard, um, one of our things just broke, so I have to replace it, yada 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 yada. Kind of annoying, but uh, I think what we can use is auto clickers on these to put the things in them. We'll figure that out in a little bit. For now, this is quite enough starlight and quite fast enough production. All we need to do is make this starlight crafting altar, and it's really cheap. And... Uh-oh. Maybe once it gets higher into the night, we'll do better? I don't know. I hope so. In the meantime, since it's really obnoxious to get all the way up there right now, and I need to remove this pillar, it looks incredibly ugly, 
I'm going to create a teleportation system using mechanism. Um, these teleporters are really nice when you use a portable teleporter. You don't actually have to make the full multi-block. So what we should be able to do is grab both of these. We can set one of them to like right here and we just need to provide power to it and set a frequency or say yeah set a frequency for it how do i do that is it literally just this base check and that's what this one is um and then we put one up there and we should be able to teleport to them as long as they have power back up here the moon is high in the sky and we can start our craft this might take a while and it's very loud but it looks pretty cool never mind I lied, it didn't take any time at all. And as you can see, this bar turns red, which means the structure isn't correct. We need to replace the structure here. However, uh, I set up the teleporter down there. Let's set up one right up here as well, which will be a teleporter just like that. Uh, give it a frequency, we'll call this astral. Hit check, and then tell this that it is indeed astral. Um, no frame, yeah, I know, no frame. Uh, I guess it's set as that already. And what we should be able to do is use our portable teleporter to go here. Set, teleport, perfect. I do need to give this a little bit of power using flux networks though. Just like that, give this this, and we're good to go. The biller is gone. We can see it slightly up there, the base thing. And I believe we should just be able to teleport up there. Perfect, that's really, really nice. Now I do need to build the structure up for this starlight crafting altar. And I believe that requires a bit of sooty marble in the center. I don't remember it quite exactly. Let me reference the book and I'll build it up. I, I'll build it up. All right, there we go. There's the structure. You can find it in the astral tome, just like that. And you'll know you built it right if this thing doesn't appear to be red anymore. And uh, yeah. Now we can do all of the starlight crafting altar recipes. And the main, main one we want to have here is the star metal, or the, not the star metal, the celestial altar. Anyways, I think that's going to end it off for today. We'll come back next time, do a little bit of more astral sorcery, upgrade our environmental, stack, environmental tech stuff, and maybe play with some reactor stuff again, because uh, I do want to start producing more than the 78 or whatever thousand hours per tick we're currently producing. But that's all I have for today. Hopefully this video is long enough. I believe it's actually quite, <laughs> quite long. So uh, yeah, nice. Uh, see you guys next time. Bye-bye.